is astonishing today to imagine a car factory was once here on what is now a retail park. From the start of production in 1920 on this site in Idle, on the north side of Bradford, the Jowett Cars Limited factory was to produce reliable and durable vehicles for over 30 years. A mural inside Morrison's supermarket and a silhouette of a van on the car park wall are the only tangible reminders of the former production facility. Many of Jowett's cars and vans have survived to this day due to the superb build quality and reliability of the two or four cylinder horizontally opposed petrol engines. But more than this, Jowett's pioneered destructive testing of their prototype vehicles. A test route was devised by Horace Grimley, manager of Jowett's experimental department, just prior to the Second World War. No other motor manufacturer in Britain had adopted such an exhaustive proving regime and it was to put Jowett cars to the forefront of its competitors. From 1950 to 1953, Philip Green was employed in the experimental department as a test driver. We met up with Phil at the Bradford Industrial Museum where our interviewer asked him to describe the test group from his personal recollections. Horace Grimley, who was the head of experimental, set up the route pre-war. It took into account every possible type of terrain. It was quite unique by the very fact that we had the Yorkshire Dales on our doorstep. This is what gave us the uniqueness. We had a route which to go through the whole 200 miles took eight hours of very hard driving. It was during Phil's tenure that Jowett's developed a replacement for the successful but dated Bradford van. The new vehicle, known by its factory model designation CD, would be available as a van, estate car, pickup and saloon. The prototype required intensive testing within a short time scale in order to have the new range up and running in what was quickly becoming a post-war competitive marketplace. Phil Green explains. The post-war van, the commercial vehicle, was the Bradford van. Right. And there was a CA, which was then superseded by the CB and by the CC. So what we were then replacing was the CC because the CD was C commercial D, the next model in line. And what year were we looking at here? When, when was it? First this was 1952. 52. Right. Phil, what was the duration of a typical vehicle test and uh, how did the driver's rotor work? Really, we only did it once, which was the 12 weeks run for the CD, the new CD Bradford, which started at the beginning of February 1952 and ran through to the end of April 1952 because we took three more lads out of experimental to join me so there were four of us running this one vehicle over a period of 12 weeks. This meant the first man went out at seven in the morning and came back at three in the afternoon. The second man went out at three in the afternoon and came back at eleven at night and then two of you went out at eleven at night through to seven in the morning. It was necessary for two men to run through the night because if you had anything happen, bearing in mind we were in deep snow up the dales, if we went off the road you'd disappear without trace. It was not only the weather conditions with which the CD vehicle had to contend, it was loaded to capacity to prove its carrying capabilities as Phil describes. You must bear in mind that the vehicle we were using was the estate car version. Right. We took the rear bench seat out and in its place we mounted two wooden boxes to the floor which, would, which contained 56 pound weights to the total weight of 10 hundred weights. In order to get a flavour of the conditions experienced on the test route, we show six different examples of restored Jowett vehicles running in all types of weather during what was to be one of our severest winters on record. The owners of these precious Jowetts volunteered to help us recreate 
just one circuit of the route around Yorkshire. Geographically, the factory at Idle was at the centre of the British Isles and located conveniently close to Yorkshire's finest rural asset, the Yorkshire Dales. Horace Grimbley designed the test route around 200 miles of varying roads, passing through many now familiar towns and villages. Remember that in the mid 20th century few people had cars and were not familiar with these sparsely populated areas. The test route starts at the factory site, heads off down to the valley bottom, left onto the A658 and crosses over the River Air before reaching Rawdon. Here a left turn onto the A65 takes the route onto Geisley, then Otley, the gateway to open countryside. Our early morning start is with Doug Ross in his 1953 Jowett Javelin Deluxe Sullivan. Probably the most well known Jowett, the Javelin was designed by General Palmer, formerly of MG. The prototype was sent out for a rigorous test on the Yorkshire route in 1945. Further testing and development continued in 1946 before it was put into production for its official launch in 1947. It was claimed to be the first all-new post-war British car. Doug bought his Javelin in 1958 he used to work at Doon Ray in Caithness, Scotland, and he would drive IUB 591 from Doon Ray to Leeds twice per month, only stopping to refuel. Travelling on the old A9 and all the original narrow roads, the one-way journey was 500 miles and the car never let him down. White Cross, Geisley, the Jowett's past the now world famous Harry Ramsey's Fish and Chips restaurant. From Otley, the route travels north to meet the A59 York to Liverpool Road at Blubberhouses. Leaving behind the prominent church at Blubberhouses, it is only a very short distance to a left turn to head north again in the direction of Bewley in Nidderdale. For the next few miles we are travelling with Phil Green and his 1951 Jowett Jupiter. This is a nostalgic trip for Phil, who drove this route many times whilst working for Jowett's experimental department. It is fitting that Phil should be using the Jupiter he bought in 2008 as his favourite car driven on the test run was a Jupiter. Phil, which was your favourite car? Oh, the, uh, my running test bed. It was our 1951 
Monte Carlo class winning Jupiter, GKY 107. Why was it your favourite? Well, it was, a, it was a magnificent piece of kit. It had enormous performance. I could get 150 mile an hour out of that car. This early rural stage of the route provided twisting roads on hills to test the vehicle's steering and braking systems. Leaving Bewley and turning left onto the westbound road to Grassington, the cars are immediately challenged by the long, steep climb up Greenow Hill. The high-level moorland road then continues to Grossington. The climb up to the summit of Greenow Hill was the first of three major hill climbs to be encountered on this gruelling journey. The road is now in limestone country. Below the ground with stump cross caves are caverns and rock formations created over thousands of years by the dissolving power of water on limestone. At Grassington, the route turns north along the valley of the River Wharf, through Kettlewell and Buckden on the B6160 road. It then begins the ascent to 1,394 feet above sea level at Kidston's, before dropping down into Bishopdale and onto West Burke. We are now travelling with Steve Waldenberg in his 1951 standard javelin. Steve has owned this javelin since 1995. The previous owner was Alf Thomas, a javelin dealer in Bedford, who famously bought the three prototype R4 Jupiter sports cars.
climb to Kidston's is the second of the challenging hills to put the Jowitz to the test. During the snowbound conditions when the CD Bradford prototype was being tested, this location was a test for the car and its drivers. Phil Green again. Kidston's was a difficult run, especially with the snow, especially at night, and you had to take the decision to commit yourself to that part of the road before making a start at all, because you couldn't stop on it and turn around and come back. The road was too narrow to be able to do this. The lying snow here gives a good idea of how it must have been in the winter of 1952. But amazingly, having dropped down into Bishop, we found it clear of snow, as seen here at West Burton. This gives an indication of how the Pennine weather can be so unpredictable. After West Burton, the B616 meets the A684 in Wensleydale. An easterly direction is followed to the market town of Labour and then along the A6108 southeast to Ripon. The route continues northeasterly on the A61. It crosses the A1 before entering the market town of Thursk, then proceeds on to the third challenging hill climb at Sutton Bank. The Jowett Jupiter featured on this section is owned by Howard Bryant. Howard's Jupiter HKU56 was first registered in 1951 to the Jowett company who ran it on the test route. They also used it for promotional work and as a customer demonstration vehicle. At Ripon, the route only just skirts the town, and at the junction, overlooked by the Victoria Clock Tower, built in 1897, makes a 90 degree turn to head out to the north. Phil Green describes how the 1950s cars coped with the tortuous climb of Sutton Bank. Very well indeed. I mean, it was merely a matter of pointing the vehicle at the hill, using the right gear to get the right torque capability from the engine, and letting it get on and do its job and pull out at the top of the hill. Two weeks previous, the weather was dramatically different and we had to abandon the day's filming.
The route now returns back down Sutton Bank, on through first again, then right up to the A1 for a fast run up to Leeming Bar. In the days of the Jowett test group there was, along this stretch of road, a rare section of dual carriageway which was suitable for testing the vehicles at high speeds. A Leeming Bar was a convenient transport cafe where the drivers would stop for refreshments. Back on the road again, and they would drive at speed down to Burra Bridge, where they would leave the A1 and travel west back to Ripon, then on to Ripley. The test room enters the centre of Ripley and passes within sight of the magnificent 7th century cathedral. Bypassing the historical village of Ripley and its splendid castle, the route continues to a right turn onto the A59 and proceeds west for 20 miles to the Dales Market town of Skipton. So far we have seen javelins and Jupiters in our recreation of the Tesla, but now we have a Bradford utility van representing the twin-cylinder commercial vehicle which also benefited from road testing and Horace Greenwood's proving ground. This attractive example of the utility deluxe van was registered in 1951 and is currently owned and driven by John Aton. In 1976 it was rescued from a scrapyard by Eric Moore, who completely restored it, including repainting into the original X-Works colour Catalina Town. This colour was obligatory for a Bradford utility deluxe. GET898 made various appearances on TV and in film over the next few years. John became its custodian six years ago and has driven it extensively, including several tours of Northern France. In one year, it travelled further than any other Jarrett Carpet side valve vehicle. The test route passes blubber houses once again, but on this occasion we are heading west along the A59 to Skipton. John's Bradford is now travelling along the original route from the A59, this short section having been bypassed by a new, straightened section of this busy road.
The final section follows the Air Valley to Bradford and the return to the factory site at Idle. The village of Kildwick, five miles along the road from Skipton, and Michael Booth's 1952 Bradford CC van travels along the original test route, avoiding the modern Air Valley trunk road. Michael has owned the van for the last four years, having bought it back after having owned it previously. He uses it on a regular basis and has rallied it in Scotland, Norwich and Coventry. The route continues down through Eaton and crosses the A650 outside the imposing gates of Bradford's Lister Park. The steep climb up to Rose reveals a panoramic view of Shipwreck and the Air Valley beyond. back to the factory and that would be the end of one driver's eight hour shift. We have come to the end of our journey along the original test route taken by Jowett's experimental department drivers. 200 miles of gruelling driving uphill and down dale as they say in Yorkshire. When Jowett's used the route to test the Bradford CD model, a lot depended on the output. Data from the test was urgently needed to speed up progress on the new vehicle. Unfortunately, it was all to no avail, as events overtook the company, with the result that the Jowett factory closed in September 1953. During the production of this video, we experienced the diverse nature of the route and very adverse weather conditions. With blizzards and freezing rain, it was at times a challenging production to be involved in. But we should spare a thought for Phil Green and his colleagues. They did not have our modern creature comforts in their vehicles. They were often freezing due to the lack of heaters, even suffering ice on the inside of their windscreens. They had to cope with travelling along narrow country lanes with inferior surfaces no grit salt on the snow and ice, no street lights, straying farm animals, wild rabbits and no mobile phones. Thanks must go to the owners of the splendid Jowett vehicles 
who helped us recreate the test route in all weather conditions. They have been instrumental in revealing a long held secret, for not many people outside Jowers knew of the existence of the test route and its fascinating story.